so with livestock mortality composting, um, the way that we actually walked out the research here at Chico State was using the pile method. And so um, we, in this site here, we would build a pile of um, compost. And so we would have a layering system. The first layer would be about 24 inches of straw or hay or even wood chips. And then we would have a layer of manure on top of that. That's kind of the start of that nitrogenous material. Then you can lay on top of that either the whole carcass or butcher's waste from the meat slab is what we utilized quite a bit of, um, which is gonna be super beneficial for small meat processors. And then you cover that with a layer of manure again and straw on top as a cap and um, let it actually um, degradate, let all the mammalian tissue degradate. And so it takes approximately 45 days for butcher's waste to um, degrade and then about 90 days for a whole carcass. And the parts that are left over are the big dense bones. Um, and so those can actually be recomposted in another cycle and that'll um, weaken them enough that they can be broke up and added to the compost later on. And so depending on, you know, the length of time after that process, you would then have about a 15 day pathogen reduction period where you would monitor temperature and it has to stay above a certain threshold for 15 days. And then um, you can turn the pile and it would be cured after that 15 day mark. And so. After that, you have a really great soil amendment that could be added back to pasture or hay ground or um, somewhere else that isn't directly like crop or you know ready to eat foods. Well, I can tell you where I got started. Um, what I do know is that there's been researchers at UC Davis that has been working on uh, composting mammalian tissue in the state for like the last 20 years. Um, where I got involved was in 2017, 2018, with an email from a producer that was asking about the utility of using composting as a method to get rid of carcasses. Um, at that point in time, we had a really massive heat event in Fresno. It killed about 6,000 head of dairy cows and it just overwhelmed the rendering facilities. Along that same timeline, we saw the rendering facility, um, North Valley Rendering, uh, just south of town, or south of Durham off of Highway 99, closed down in 2018. And so our bills here at the University Farm for getting rid of a carcass um, increased from, you know, uh, $30 to, you know, upwards to $100 for a pickup. And so, that, that is where I really got started. It has been a long road um, and a, a complicated road, but our research team has consisted of Cooperative Extension, and then we've also built a lot of relationships with Cal Recycle personnel, as well as CDFA and um, local county officials in environmental health as well. The authors were uh, Assembly Member Diane Pappin, um, and um, Juan Allianz, they were, they were co-authors um, on the bill. And then the supporters were California Cattlemen's Association, Western United Dairymen, and then um, we also had a lot of stakeholders that signed on to the letter of support, including Farm Bureau, um, Roots for Change, and many, many others. I don't know if it's gonna save a ton of time or money, but for producers like me in our ranch in uh, Shasta and Lassen counties, it's gonna give us another option. So in kind of the northern counties and the counties that are located a long ways away from rendering facilities, um, we are getting really limited on options to dispose of those routine deaths. Um, and so some counties you can bury, some counties you can't. There's decreasing number of landfills that will actually take carcasses now. So a lot of us are really out of a lot of options. And so this is just gonna add one more option to properly and responsibly dispose of those routine livestock deaths. And so I'm not sure it's gonna be a huge cost savings, um, but it is gonna provide a different option. Um, or a different tool in the toolbox as a producer. I, I think the big part is is to you know to make sure that we're doing it responsibly. So um, utilizing the compost 
um, process that's going to work best for your, your operation. For us here at the farm, it's the pile compost because we have this facility and we kind of built it for using the pile method. For another operation, it might be the windrow method. Uh, we designed the, um, the legislation and we designed our best management practices so that it would utilize materials that were already um, on site at different producers, or for different producers. So at every part of this process, I continually ask the question, okay, could my dad do this at home? Having a really good site is important, and especially if you're wanting to use composting to remove attractants from predators, like we're dealing with the wolves right now. If we have a wolf kill after, um, you know, we do the compensation process, then we could actually remove that carcass and compost it. And when that is done correctly, it will actually decrease um, the uh, other um, wolves and predators coming in. And so um, there's been research out of Oregon State that has actually shown that composting is a more preferred method rather than bone piles. And so that's, that's how we're gonna use it on our ranch. Um, but as far as the composting process itself, the temperature is really important. So maintaining a high temperature um, to increase the efficiency of that degradation process of the mammalian tissue is really important. And so that's also going to help with limiting the pathogens um, that are present in the compost and um, really helping to kind of break down the bone and stuff as well. So we're the one piece of equipment that producers may need to buy that they probably don't have on site would be like a compost uh, thermometer and so um, that's one of the biggest ways that we can you know speed up or slow down the process is highly dependent on what the temperature of the pile is. Mm -hmm.